Okay. I'd like to call the. Uh, Wait a minute, is he coming? Okay. <laughs> I want to call the uh, Carlisle School Committee uh, meeting to uh, order. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. It's always nice to see a packed house. You get used to that. Um, we will start with public comments. Are there any public comments? Yes, ma'am. Abigail Chabuk Street. Okay. Uh, I have uh, six questions for the school committee. Uh, school committee. Okay. I have them printed out if you okay. would like me uh, to uh, pass them now to you. Uh, you can give them to me, sure. Beth, you come late, you got to stand. <laughs> nice. Oh, thank you, Al. Um, so each question has a uh, part. <coughs> We, we, we have sort of a time limit here. Oh, so. sure. I know that the, the school committee okay. meetings only go for three hours. Okay. So. It might be. Uh, <laughs> only? <laughs> well, it's perhaps you want to give one to Cynthia. Do you have an extra? Oh, I have one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
while they may not be ideal in certain seasons, they would say not usable or not safe or something. Over on which part of this paragraph? I think when we were talking to Margaret, was there some issue of safety? Yes. So it's in there somewhere. Other areas, right now, the front of Spalding is usable for some sports, but other areas are considered unsafe. My understanding is that there are times at which all, uh, all fields are used and considered safe. Where are you looking? Uh, this is in page three of seven, section D, um, halfway down this paragraph. Uh, yeah. Right now, the front of Spalding is usable for some sports. Well, yeah. wait, is, where is it? Is it Margaret's quote? It's, it's not a quote. Not exactly a quote, but it's pa it's paraphrasing, I think, what she said. You see it's, the word Spalding with a, a question mark yep, next to the keep, margin? Left yeah, I mean, it should be clarified, I guess, then. Yeah, it's it my recollection. Margaret, are you here? Yeah. I, I think Margaret would issue that. I think she would yeah, say what you I mean, we try to... <laughs> the question is, I recall that you made the remark that some parts of the field are unsafe, and that's Correct. what we reported on. Okay, so maybe we should just clarify, um, Nancy, that um, uh, Ms. Heigl indicated that yes. or something. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a statement of opinion. It happens to be a highly educated opinion about it. Um, it's not only a highly educated opinion, but we've had people walk the field um, uh, preparing to um, tell us what we need to do to the field to bring it to a usable level. Right. And uh, this gentleman, I can't recall his name, um, mentioned that this field is totally unsafe and unusable. Right. Well, we're going to, uh, in uh, the, the first or second discussion item today, revisit this issue. So mm -hmm. right now we're just trying to, um, and we'll take certainly your opinion at that point. I think sure. all we want to do right now is capture the um, sense of what happened last month in the minutes. So I, I would just say, Ms. Heigl said, stated. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay. Any other um, comments on the minutes? Should we vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, minutes approved. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, Mr. Flannery is not expected. Right? So, Mr. Flannery, after yeah. over 46 years of reliable, faithful, outstanding service, right. yep. he's not answering. He's, he's, not okay. he's, he's, he's reluctant, reluctant to come, I guess. Yeah. I'm not sure. But, um, All right. but it's kind of like the Long Ranger. Yeah, that's that right. was a great job. We'll try in February. Yeah. Well, I have, so I have two things, and others may want to join in. Um, he did send us a note, a thank you note. Uh, we gave him a box for tree, I guess. Thank you, Nancy. Sort of like my wife when uh, somebody gets a present and they thank me, and I'm like, oh, yeah, right. Uh, thank you for the beautiful boxwood tree. It has adorned my home over the holidays and was enjoyed by my family during our annual gathering. I very much appreciate your thoughtfulness. It has been an honor and a pleasure working at the Carlisle Public School in my position over the past several decades. <laughs> Best wishes and Happy New Year, David. So that's from David. Uh, I wrote up a short thing that I'll read into the record here, for, and then others can do it. Um, I've known David professionally for 15 years, virtually all of my time in Carlisle. I can divide this into two parts. For the first part, I was a Finn Count liaison to both the fire department and the school, and met with David many times on budget issues, especially regarding maintaining an on-call fire department. I was amazed at David's ability to juggle all his responsibilities and recite details from memory without notes. However, I did not really appreciate the work David has put into the community until the second half of our interactions, which were in my capacity on the school committee and David's as CPS facilities director. David was truly dedicated to keeping the school's physical plant running smoothly and safe, safely and, almost all, and, excuse me, and always mindful of the budgetary impact. Given the many parts to that job, I almost forgot that his other day job was to run the fire department. But I know that he was dedicated to the same goals there, plus recruiting and motivating the volunteers that are so critical to our town's safety. David has left big shoes to fill on both sides, but at least as the school is concerned, I'm confident his legacy will be continued with Rob and his staff. Nevertheless, anyone who walks through the school doors each day, and the parents of children who walk through those doors, 
should take a moment to appreciate the effort David has given over the decades to keep the school clean, comfortable, and safe. David, we will miss you. So I hope David maybe tunes in at some point to do that, but in any case, thank you very much. Anybody else? Well, I, I think that I worked with David a little bit in my capacity on the PTO, um, and I, like you, I was just always amazed at how much he could draw from memory and he knows every nook and cranny of right. probably the entire town in terms of public buildings, and uh, he will shortly be missed. Good. Okay. All right, the next item is, again, the um, discussion of the community center proposal on Spalding Field, and we all got a copy of the Gale study for 2016 uh, after last meeting. Um, now, I was expecting Jerry, or is anyone here from? Right? Uh, You're here in that capacity? No, not really. I was just going to listen in. But Jerry Lerman is the uh, okay. representative. I thought he was coming, or Peter, somebody was coming over here. Um, or maybe Peter Not, Peter, yeah, Peter said he would come oh, as well. Gone. Okay, so maybe we should wait. Yeah, is he late? late? Okay. All right. So why don't we why don't we hold off on that and move to the update on solar for the moment? Are you waiting for somebody for that as well? Well, we, you know, so we met today um, uh -huh. and we asked the engineer to to come tonight so that the school yeah. committee had additional questions about um, the proposal. We mm -hmm. could, you know, okay. we'd have someone here to answer them. So um, we can talk about some of the changes to the proposal. What do you not want to get into it at this time? Um, yeah, we can those start. Are, those are significant when, when they rolled out the new maps. Sure. Do you want me to just present, so, sure. so give the background, and then sure. um, Why not? talk about that where, way, where we're at right on. now, yeah, and then yeah. we can shift gears if when we need to? OK. So um, the materials I have are the first thing that um, I just want to remind everyone about the original proposal. This is what we talked about at the last meeting. Um, and I don't know if it, everybody doesn't have a copy of this picture. If you're, I don't know if you're going to be able to get it up on the screen, but um, if you recall, um, these were the canopies in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. This is the bus canopy. Um, and this was a separate ground right. mount, right. which has been since, um, you know, dis, you know, it's been um, moved out of the, of the running because of the amount of trees that would need to be cleared. Um, so the changes essentially to the canopy, um, the ground mounts in the parking lot are that this bus canopy is, would be bigger. This is the new layout. They revise that. Okay. They revise that. Um, the small one here would be removed, mm -hmm. um, so it's no longer there over where the stairs are. Mm -hmm. when you come down to the parking lot from the stairs, um, and then there was an additional proposal of a um, canopy over the parking lot. Oh, over where people drop their kids off in the morning? Yeah. Mm. And, and you, is that the one you're talking about, a separate project or rooftop? So, this, yeah. so um, in addition, this is a separate discussion, but um, they did look at roof mounted. Mm -hmm. um, and because of the, the, because of the way the project was originally mm -hmm. um, proposed, the RFP, mm -hmm was really, didn't include anything that would be roof mounted. So that would be a separate process, a separate undertaking if we were going to pursue something that had a roof mount. Right. Did they give any um, hard numbers on the number of parking spots that would be So that's price? going to be a good question that we're going to need to, um, you know, we're going to need to find out how many parking spots, um, if any, would be lost or gained through the um, addition of these canopies. And then obviously the... How would you gain parking spots? Um, they felt like some of it, I think some of the islands might, you know, because we have grassy areas there and we, they, those might disappear and it might allow for more parking. We'll see. When they come, we'll be able to, you know. Is that the newer? <laughs> so this is, uh, I think this was the original, this was the last meeting. So I just want to give a little bit more background. Um, there's, there's a timeline of events that really need to happen here. Um, in this um, agreement, we're going to, the MRESCO will be making use of some incentives through the SMART program. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a timeline really associated with that. Um, the longer we push it out, 
those incentives are sort of decreasing. So in the interest of being, making, being able to make the most out of those incentives, we want to move this along so that we could have a targeted date of um, installation during the summer. This, this summer? This summer, yeah. So um, you know, there are a few things that need to happen. Obviously, you know, this committee would need to evaluate and, and vote on, on the solar canopies. Um, we also need to, um, the town council is assisting with drafting a lease agreement and a pilot payment new taxes agreement um, between the town and MROSCO. And then um, there would need to be a bylaw change to the solar zone in um, is, it, is it practical to have all those things happen in time for some construction? Well, these, so they feel, we as a committee felt that Yes, it could be. I mean, the three things that would need to be prepared for town meeting, which is April 29th, are the lease agreement, the pilot, and bylaw change. Um, and obviously, this committee's vote and approval. So for the draft of those things to be ready for town meeting, we're looking at mid -March. What are the three things again? Lease agreement, the Lease agreement, bylaw the pilot, change. the bylaw change, school committee approval. Okay. Um, and all that would be a sort of town meeting-ish, right? Yeah, March. Oh, well, we wanted, we would it, but they, the town meeting would do the bylaws. And that would be the final. You know, that would, those would be the votes would be taken there. But we'd want to have everything ready by March. Right. So the issue of the um, well, you keep keep going. I will not ask questions after. Paving. Well. The paving. Yeah. Yeah, the paving. That's you know that's been incorporated into the the plan, and I think um, when they come, we'll have you know obviously we'll have some questions about that. But what I think that we need to. Um, determine what is the extent that they have considered within their own project planning for paving because they're going to need to install the posts um, so they're going to be tearing some area up and so obviously paving is going to be included with that project um, what's the what have they allocated for that another question I would have is if they're you know are they using prevailing wages in their estimates for whatever work is being done yeah because well, for any municipality, we have to pay for bailing wages. Um, so, go ahead. Actually, a question about that. I know on any public buildings, we certainly have to. If we lease the land to a private entity, are they obligated for their construction to... to That's my question. Okay. Yeah, because we are for, for the work that we would be doing. Right. And because we haven't yet identified the scope of the paving project for mm -hmm. our needs, we're going to need to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to need to marry it with whatever, you know, their yeah. proposal includes. So that's, that's a question. Is, is the sequence of things to, physical things to do, that you prep the parking lot and pave it, and then you start punching holes, or you punch holes and pave around, do you, do you know? Well, they're going to need to lay those posts in. So okay. while I'm not the engineer, I'm assuming but that they need to tear it up and get those in there, and then so they're going to So it reinforces around. the need to do it all so I think I can't answer the questions as well as they can, and right. they are going to come. So okay. now that um, okay. Mr. Best is here from okay. Redcom, the two you Peters are here, right? And Peter, can I ask here. a more broad question to everybody on the committee, and potentially those in our audience too? I'm not understanding what the, all the negatives are here. I understand we might lose parking spots. Over time, it will become less efficient. Uh, they have to pave under it. Where, what are the downsides that we need to be considered? One question I would have is about long-term, you know, maintenance. If they're if they're solely responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of those canopies, which I assume they would be, since we're leasing the land to them, um, I think that you know that was what happens question. at the end of the lease type of thing. Yeah. Well, that's What's question. the? Did you sense from them what the oldest project? In other words, where? Where's a reference we could go to that's had a project for a while? Is it, or is it all pretty new? And we, we asked them to bring some information. So Jonathan Decock is here also okay, from, the, from the okay. committee. Sure. Um, so we asked them to bring some, and they did send um, yep. some renderings of you know, yep. what it might look like. And they've also sent us, shared some pictures of projects that they did. Um, and then they'll be able to talk more extensively about uh, you know, other work that they've done. Jonathan, did you want to add? Uh, just that the RFP um, and the lease agreement that's out there so far uh, does explicitly specify that they need to maintain it throughout its life, and they need to deconstruct it and put things back to the way it was <coughs> at the end of 20 years, unless we opt to continue the lease with them. Oh, great. 
I do think there are some aesthetic questions we may consider as we look at. They came today with a very different proposal than we looked at initially. And you can see they, they're looking at putting an array over the Spalding lot, which is right out Circle. there, which we hadn't really thought of. Um, and there's also another, I don't know if you shared the roof, they're also looking at putting rooftop units on Spalding, which we have to look into and make sure that that's feasible. Are, are these units pitched on the top? Yeah. And what happens to water drain off? We had a long discussion about water drain up in the pitching. So um, they're pitched, but there's spaces in between. So it's not a, a there's not going to be a massive runoff at any one space. There's spaces in between each solar panel. So there's, there's, there's I think you describe bigger drops, but less frequently. Right. So the, there's the spaces between when it rains, you would drip off the edge of the panels. Right. They're they're a little bit um, tilted, like. One is one degree, they were going to say, and then another set of panels is seven degrees. So they're not very tilted. It's still, there's a large water. area that's draining to a single line. Right. It could be a lot of water. It could be a lot of water. But, uh, so at least the ones over the parking areas would have spaces between them. The panels themselves are three foot by six foot. And so each panel would drip around it. Right. Um, what we did ask them about today was if they could do something to manage that particularly in the bus area, so that the kids when getting on and off the bus aren't dripped on. I don't know if you guys think that's a good idea, but I brought it up. So Probably a good idea. And the other thing that they, so the way they described the ones over the parking, in the car, you know, in the parking lot, over the cars is a sort of, a, it's a Y. So it's pitched this way, and so the water that's running would be um, in the center where the that cars are parked. No, it's in. So you oh. wouldn't be. So this is the part where you put those in. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. Don't you do it if you stay on the wrong spot or you have to duck no, around so through that spot quickly. Yeah, so it's this way and the cars are parked. Right. Theoretically, you could gutter it, couldn't you? Uh, I, I believe so, but I didn't say. Laura's in Morano. But one of the nice things about the way they're putting this no. as a Y is yes. that stuff like snow and ice would go towards the center of it, and so it won't land on people going to their cars. I see. Okay. So. Jonathan, so the, the panels that they're proposing over the Spalding play, play area? Uh, no, that's actually over the parking area. It's the, the circle. The circle parking. The drop off. Oh, the circle circle next to the plaza. That's the one closest. The is the one over the, the plaza, right though? No. 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 Oh, all right. the, the, the really large one is over the bus park area. Okay, now I get it. Okay, thank and you. This is like it's over the sidewalk. <laughs> it's not the fence. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's over the, like the area and the grass around it and stuff. They, uh, based on the discussion that you had last time with them, making sure that it didn't impact traffic flow, yeah. they made that one bigger so that their posts could be outside of the traffic flow and outside of the sidewalks. Okay. So. Um, if it's over the grass, what does that mean for the future of the grass? It's wet. Well, it doesn't get light. Yeah. It gets less light, I assume. We're going to replace it with artificial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those are some of the plastic yeah. flowers. Right. Those are some of the potential downsides. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But I mean, that's sort of a detail. I think when we asked them um, when they were here about rooftop, the answer that we got was it's not practical. But right. now they've decided that it is practical or might be practical. Well, I don't think so. What came out of that discussion today was that when the original yeah. Solar <laughs> Energy Task Force was evaluating um, solar in Carlisle, that mm -hmm. school was being built at the time, so it wasn't a part of the evaluation. So we don't really know, actually, if that particular building, um, you know, we would have to evaluate that. No, but the, one of the engineers who was here indicated that they had studied it and. The, the Energy Task Force has studied it, yeah. not MRS Hill. Okay. So the Energy Task Force, when they studied it, they came back with the conclusion that okay. it was not structurally sound enough. For so which building? Not the new one, right? all of the flat ones. I presume. The flat ones. Yeah. But Spalding so it wasn't not. that building. Spalding is new, it was not evaluated. Okay, so right. it's possible that they think it might be. Yeah. They decided what? not to evaluate it because of the protrusions. But now, I don't know, what are they coming back with in terms of the latest rooftop? Is it the spalding? This is yes. for, yeah. Okay. So, so what are the protrusions do to that? I guess they have to dance around it. The skylights, yeah. So process-wise, for spalding, does the town have to put out RFP again to go through that process, solicit bids, quotes, and if so, is it on a completely different timeline than the rest of the that's what I'm. That's what I'm hearing, yeah. 
that's what I mean. So that'll probably be the next phase. I don't know that we'd be able to hit that by the town meeting. No. no. Uh, however, well, the town meeting doesn't need to worry about that because we already have, as of right, the ability to put things on the roof. Up to whatever the school uses, right? Right. Which, yeah, there's some limitations on okay. that. Okay, so so different process, separate process, but maybe not necessarily uh, a timeline constraint. So uh, on the town vote, which would be required to amend bylaws to include the school in the solar overlay district, would that be the only town um, buy-in required, or is so maybe you could, we, what else we need to get support from all the various boards. So the planning board would need to do the site plan review. The school committee would need to do their reviews. The board of selectmen would have to do their reviews. I'm sure, I'm missing some. So is that? I think it's important to note too that this is part of a larger um, initiative because um, the school is one component. We're talking about that tonight here because it's a school yep. committee, but um, there's additional proposal in, as part of this project to put um, solar canopies at the transfer station. Um, so I think it's just important to know. Are know. they, I guess, to build on the question, are the boards all going to do the bylaws as a package then? Is it your understanding they'll the overlay of the transfer, or maybe that's what you've done, and this and the roof, just kind of. The bylaw change? Um, well, the solar overlay district is now. Can we recognize the planning board for the bylaw? The solar uh, overlay district right now is, is limited to the transfer station. So I believe the only bylaw I have in front of us for is for expansion of that into the school. Right. Uh, yes, and also there's a height specification of the bylaw, and the canopies would be taller than that, so those two items can be adjusted. Correct. The town Council is in the process of figuring out how to update the bylaw. Yeah, yeah and this, this is fairly common. We do this quite often, too, in these bylaws, so it will require a two-thirds majority of town meeting to pass, but that's the only gate where the whole community will be involved. Now, from the site plan review, that's a, that's a um, it's still a by-right construction, so they would come in front of the planning board for site plan review, and it would be a public public meeting, a public hearing, um, so that we could just hear and recommend things like um, impact on parking, uh, screening, things like that, and placement of it. But it's not something that the town has to approve again a second time. Is it so? Is it practical in your mind, Peter, to get all these ducks lined up? I, it is. Yes. Yep. And you I think you guys here. Right? Yeah, so um, we have Rob from Amoresco. Rob Jackson, um, Amoresco, Creating Director of Development. And Eric Zimmerman from the um, Solar Committee as well. So we started a little bit early um, with the discussion. We were just going over the proposed, um, the new proposed canopies. Okay. Um, where there were some questions. Um, first, question was about the parking spaces. Have you um, had a chance to evaluate um, whether there will be an increase or decrease in the number of parking spaces with the proposed solar arrays? We, we have not at this point. Uh, we're also looking at the, those costs uh, at this point for our discussion at the last meeting, including paving and, <coughs> and all that. So uh, that, that's, that's part of what we're looking at at this point. Okay. So that is one of the questions that this committee has. Have you evaluated how the landscaping would be affected? Uh, not exactly at this point. I haven't gone to you know visual screening or you know something like that. But that's part of uh, you know civil environmental portion of things, and uh, that's up and coming uh, very shortly. Um, part of the project. Rob, um, what's if we wanted to kind of get a reference from you? Can you, what's like the oldest in customer? In other words, what's the earliest project that's comparable to this? How many years, how many years ago did you build one? Uh, personally, I've been involved in the Massachusetts solar market for 10 years, and that's pretty much what the premium market has been. Um, and the, the firm that I work for, um, you know, we've been doing solar since 2001. Uh, when the company was first initiated. So uh, the Green Communities Act really spurred a lot of... I mean, we, we probably want to talk to somebody that's been a customer about how the aging process of the physical sure. stuff went. Yeah. Could, do you think you could provide that to us? We could, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So um, Amoresco would maintain the yes. structures throughout yes. the life of the lease, right? Right. We would, uh, we're a firm that prefers to have a long-term long uh, situation and long-term ownership <coughs> structure, and so that's how we've uh, structured the deal, and, and so we'll, we'll be, you know, we'll build, we'll originate, we'll develop, we'll uh, construct, and we'll operate uh, the solar array through the lifetime of the project. And were there some questions about the water runoff, or... Um, we talked a little bit about that, about the shape of the canopies over the parking area um, and the pitch. Yep. So I don't know if there's any other questions about that. Well, what is the effect of um, kids walking underneath it at when it's raining? Right. Um, and is it, uh, it completely dry or you get to the edge and you're suddenly soaked? Or is it something in between? How, do, how does that work? Is it possible to gutter it? Um, yes. Well, already this, the, the pavement is impervious, so... Right. You can run it off somewhere else anyway. Yeah. We had a good discussion earlier today at the town hall, and uh, so we uh, got those uh, comments. Um, certainly over where the bus buses would run, uh, that's where we would focus water management. Um, water management obviously uh, you know, adds a bit to the cost, so we would focus on that area where the kids are going to be, so we don't obviously, you know, impact any of you know, the, the buses and the kids you know, that are coming through there. Um, in, in other areas, we, you know, we, we, there, you know, there's kind of separation between the panels, I guess, uh, the carports, so there's not like uh, water gushing off of these things. It's kind of just a, a little bit of dripping and that sort of thing. But they are going to be shaped in kind of like a, a Y configuration so that it kind of diverts the dripping to more of the center point, and uh, you know. So in, in these parking lots, uh, in these, you know, we would, I guess, propose not doing as as much water management there as we would where it's really important where we're dropping off kids, basically. What about lighting? I think can give lighting, lighting is part of yeah, obviously, very important part of it, and. Uh, uh, included in all of our canopies, certainly, and there was kind of a consideration of, uh, you know, not too much light, but enough light so you can see and navigate, you know, the parking lot as well at night, but also not too bright of a light for the surrounding residents as well, so that's what we'll consider in design as well. How wide is the, the widest column post that's supporting uh, you know, probably no more than a foot, I would think. So it doesn't create significant blind spots where? No, no, it's, uh, the supports, uh, I think it's about four, four supports on, on this, this one over the, uh, the bus, and then, um, the number will have to be figured out, but it, it, it won't be a significant blind spot, I guess, is, you know. Yeah. So yeah. kids walking in, cars driving in. Right. Okay. Well, so, right. Yeah. And it, it, I mean, obviously, the poles will be outside the right of the way, so there would be no chance of running into it. So um, there were some additional uh, pictures on the email. Did you sure, okay. see just sort of a change? Um, the engineer sent me some photos of. Um, just one other point of clarification. So when it so came with the new plans today. And you expanded, and you, the ex expansion isn't necessary in order to make this happen because you expanded so you weren't going to have the solar canopy of the transfer station. Right, yes. But with the transfer station, we don't need to have we don't need this expansion. Right. <laughs> yeah, was, I'm showing them, I took some, actually my daughter took a couple pictures. We were at a, my son had a basketball game. It's either Marlboro or I don't know the if neighbor just not The image is not. Maybe we turn the light out. Yeah, maybe. Um, at least that, she, she sent a picture of that really large one. That's probably that? comparable yeah. to where. Um, yeah, that's like That one up there, that might be similar to what the bus canopy right. would look like. That's exactly right. right. Yeah. And we tried to situate that low point so, you know, where, the, where people were standing, I guess. And obviously there'd be water management there so that we're diverting from that area where people might or walk by.
Um, so I think uh, I was talking to Melinda a little earlier today about this process. Um, so for us to vote on um, approval, we should make sure we're clear on whatever questions we need to answer. So I think the two that I know of that you've heard are a higher fidelity estimate of the number of parking spots that might be lost. Right. Parking does get pretty jammed up. We probably don't have sufficient ones as it is. And the second one is just really clarifying that you've worked out the, the paving piece of it. Because at least from our view, and is Rob doing this too? Maybe Rob's looking into this. Rob's looking into with Gary Davis around yeah. getting a quote from paving. And right. So I guess you're getting some support from the town side to give you, give you so you don't have to scramble around and get the That'd numbers. But I think we would need a commitment that that's been rolled into the economics. Sure. Yep. Those are the two that I have. Anybody else? Uh, let's be specific, and if you can get Melinda and Jim those answers before the next meeting. Because sure. I, I think, and I, I don't want to say this for sure, but we probably want to get them voted next meeting because that way if it's a go, you know, there's all kinds of things that have to happen to get the warrant in for town meeting. So we could possibly go two meetings, but we shouldn't, yes. Um, on the payment, I think it's going to be important for the school committee to explain to Amoresco what you guys really want. Right? Yeah, so this committee needs to identify the entire scope of work for what we, where we want that payment right. to, right. what right. we want done. So that's where we've, ha we've um, started the conversation between Gary and Rob. Right, so I think so. it's on us to do that. So and then I the, guess, Jim, make sure that that should kind of happen sooner rather than later so that these guys I think it's important that Rob and you particularly and Gary specify what the scope and the cost of paving would be so that Amoresco can fold that into their study. And Dave, yes, sir. I don't think originally the array over Spalding yeah. Well, this was is in the project. This is the next thing to talk about is, you know, the this is a new um, proposal and I think that's it. Because then you need a Butters Historical Commission. Yeah. That's the spall in the building one. The spall in lot at the circle. This was good. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess I got to turn back to Peter Gambino who wakes up. Um, so, I mean, the, there was a point raised. If we incorporate Spalding Circle, then you get a Butters, and mm -hmm. and when I asked you, can you get it all done, you, I assume you well, you're including all yeah, So, so, so regardless of the project, when we do site plan review, it's a public hearing, we're going to have to do a notice to a Butters. For site plan review, it's on the town to do, and usually the planning board office will pick that up and do it. So, um, and it doesn't matter if it's Spalding Circle or the opposite side of the property, your Butters list is generated from the property itself in the parcel. Yeah, I mean, I defer to so. the planning board on the mechanics. I, yeah. My question is just, are you confident you can get it all yeah, done? We, yeah, we're, we're pretty confident. Uh, Jonathan is coming to our meeting on Monday, and we're going to hopefully get that process rolling. All right. So let's finish up. Do, are there any other specific questions that we need to address in time for take to consider the next? Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a sense um, during the discussion that this particular array, um, yep. because it's so close to, you yeah. know, these these homes here, that it might not be. It's not. It doesn't have the same impact as um, right. canopies in the parking lot there. What does that mean? Impact? Aesthetically. Aesthetically. Yeah. Meaning it doesn't look as good, or it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't look. Good. I would say I would say a couple of those. One, I don't think it'll look as good. Two, it may not matter because. They extended it thinking that they weren't going to have the solar array at the transfer station, but with the transfer station, they don't need that. And at this point, correct me if I'm wrong, we can't get a real, you know, what, how much, if we extend the, no. the solar, does that bring more money to the town or less of what that dynamic is? Right, what's the trade-off? We're not sure what the trade-off is, so all those being the case, I think we can move on. We should move so, on. so your recommendation is let's just take the parking lot as a, the main parking lot as we discussed as a package. Yes. Fold in the paving cost and see if the economics work for that as a standard. With the transfer station. With the transfer station. The transfer station. Yeah, the transfer circle, I, I don't think needs to be. Okay. I mean, no, 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 no. We would not. just do this, and then in future phases, I presume we could look at the Spalding building. If that's still on the table, the and this as different projects. So. I 
I just think for you know aesthetic impact, it, it doesn't work as nice, right? Right. That's yeah. Cool. I was what I was going to say. I looked up the town and the calendar there. Wayland High. Did you did you guys do Wayland High School? Yes. yes. I yeah. Very attractive. I sent. I showed these guys pictures. I was impressed with uh, these things. Okay. So I think anything I else? Does it something? Just yes. one more comment, David. Um, in addition to the site plan review and the various boards, I think we're going to also try to hold some public hearings with the negotiating team so that the public can communicate directly to the negotiating team and to Amoresco. Okay. So we're trying to make sure we do this, you know, is that our right? Okay. And that, and that will also have a community education component to it. So there'll be some work done before you know, town meeting. People will already know, um, you know, the relevant information about this project. What's your timing of that? Uh, I'm hoping for February. Okay. So I mean, from again, from our standpoint, since we only meet once a month, I want to be cognizant of the timing needed for us to weigh in. And uh, you did bring up a few issues, David. There were some questions I asked, which they said we're looking at it. I'd right. like it to be looked at and presented by that time as well, right. including things such as um, the, the water um, right. and the landscape. So maybe you should write those questions down, and, and um, Melinda's sort of the liaison on this. So what I have is, you know, question number of parking spaces. Uh, we asked for references from previous customers. Uh, water management, where do we want it? Where are you proposing to put the water management? How does that impact people? Um, and I think we didn't have, but we asked about lighting, but we understand that there will be lighting, so that's not. Um, and then. Landscaping. Uh, the landscaping. Right. Okay. And that what I'd like to give them before they leave is a sense of, um, you know, this is what we talked about today, and what is the sense of this committee that this is where we want to land with this, and that this isn't under consideration at this time. I'm okay with the Spalding Circle too. I think it's all. Be okay. I'm okay with Spalding Circle, but I take Jim's point. If it becomes, it probably it may be a little more complicated in your analysis, but it's probably better if you look at this as a st the main parking lot as a standalone, and then a package sure. including that. So if there are too many concerns about the spalding circle, you already still have your economic model of sure. that. And I mean, that way we have to fix I'll throw another um, idea out there, Christine, credit for it. If you do something near spalding circle, uh, potentially the, the plaza can get very mm -hmm. hot. When the kids are playing, what's really hot? The plaza, the, uh, the, the paved playground for yeah. kids. Um, so to the extent that there's some small fraction of that, that could be sheltered, we might, you know, a little defense, maybe a bench or something, it could be, uh, that could be an advantage. Right? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, you, I guess you can convey those in writing. Thank you very much. All right, so we took, for those of you who've come late, we took uh, the solar ahead of Spalding Field study because not every, the people that needed to be here aren't here, weren't here, but now Mr. Best is here. At least one of them is here. You're yes. representing? Recom. Recom. Yes. And Peter Gambino, you're representing? Athletics, uh, CCYBS. CCYBS, and, and uh, COA is not here, but. No, I got a message to say that he has bronchitis, oh, and he doesn't want to affect everybody. So, so all right. Um, so I think it was we, you know, a lot was sort of thrown at us at the last meeting, and uh, we heard, you know, a variety of opinions about the use of the current use or overuse of Spalding Field as it is now, and some time pressure, let's say, to decide whether it's worth using the Chennai grant money to evaluate Spalding Field as a possible site for the recreation center, or is it a non-starter and should you just move on? I mean, that's kind Correct. of right. um, We were also, we also talked to a little bit to uh, the teachers here who represent the school athletic department, particularly Margaret, the director, and heard that, you know, the fields get a lot of use. And I know Peter's going to stand up and say, not only school, but you know, lots of other activities obviously get a lot of use. Um, and we were directed to the study, the Gale study from 2016, which I read today. And uh, the takeaway from my standpoint anyway is, you know, Spalding's pretty heavily used, as in overused. So that's kind of where it was. And I thought what we should do is kind of circle back on all this stuff and, and see if, if 
again, is it worth even continuing, or is the conclusion that Spalding is, you know, so heavily used that it would be silly to um, cut into the field space? I said at the last meeting, and I'll say it again. I think we need to preserve every inch of the playing field because we use it. If there's a proposal that allows that and allows a, a community center, wonderful. I haven't heard how that's going to happen, though. I'm really glad that we got this Yale study because it, you know, it shed a light light on some misinformation I think has been going around. Um, it, you know, one was that the fields are underutilized, and I think that you know the state of them being the need to be repaired is really born out of the fact that they are used very often, and we don't have enough playing fields in town to you know give those fields recovery time between right. uses. So, and the second question that um, you know the that came before this committee was whether there was any possibility of expanding, um, you know, on Spalding Field and using an, another area of it for another use while maintaining the current fields that we have, which are, you know, not spread out enough. They have to overlap. Um, and this report says, due to the Spalding parcel being surrounded by environmentally sensitive areas and topography, there is little or no room for expansion. Um, so I, you know, I think. We already knew that. I mean, the fields are overlapping. It's not ideal. Sometimes you can't use two of them at the same time because of that. So, um, I mean, for me, that answered the questions of, w of whether this should be considered as a site. Okay. Christine? I have to say, I, I, I hate to s stop a project, but I think that the study and the fact that it's very well used, um, and, and I think that we need to be prudent about the space that we do have. I just think it would be risking the future and well and to say I don't want to say it to you know to stop a project because I, I want to no, I, I, I guess I didn't say, yeah no, no, I guess I didn't say the, option that I, yeah. the that location I, option not right but the location spot. option <laughs> that I'm that I'm also a part of that community center committee and I believe that a community center would be a tremendous asset to Carlisle you know and, and but I think that you would you know we need to take that in a broader we need to take a broader view and uh, you know originally the community center was conceived a uh, you know was sort of a narrower scope and as a senior center and it didn't have you know quite the same buy-in as I believe an intergenerational community center will have that serves the needs of you know all the generations in Carlisle and I think if we are looking at it from that broad point of view, then we definitely need to consider, you know, the siting of it and anything that diminishes the resources that our school has, right. which are already limited as for, in terms of outdoor space, you know, is not looking at that big picture. Right. So, right. Jim, did you have a chance to talk with? Again? Yeah. So, yeah. in speaking with with the team, I think everyone's highly motivated by any conversation that generates the possibility of having those fields repaired because. Yeah. They're a challenge, right? As Mario will attest, that's what we're interested in. But there's a great deal of fear or concern that we would lose an, an inch of those fields, right? And the fields that are vital to whether it's spring, fall, PE, intramurals, inter, intramurals, uh, rec okay. days, field days, those fields are used. And that's just the school usage, that's just our usage. So that, that's a concern. As much as we like the idea of focusing on repairing those fields, the idea and the possibility of going in that direction is... Exactly. So I definitely think we need to separate these two conversations. I think the possibility of, returning, of preparing those fields is real. It has nothing at all to do with the community center, right? right. Well, well, no, I wouldn't build the community center is, on them. We're probably not going to repair them. No, well, no, no, right, we won't have them. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Is like I, I, the, the argument that came to me was that if we do the community center, we might have a chance in there to bundle in to repair the fields. Well, I think we're going to be doing that anyway. I mean, I went in front of RecCom on, on Tuesday, was it? No, Monday. Tuesday. Whatever. Or yeah. Monday, yeah. Monday, it was Monday. And they actually have now agreed at this point to start investing some money on a study about how we can do it. The number that they brought up was 15000 and we got we got the okay from them to go ahead and start this This process. study, the yeah. Gale study from three years ago, mm -hmm. two years ago, was, I think, I didn't reproduce that page, but I think it's at least 50000 yeah, but this isn't a study like the Gale study about usage. This is a very specific technical study about the about the field quality and what's underneath there and what would what would we have to do to get an estimate to repair those fields. Oh, you mean the fifteen thousand is to get an estimate? Yeah, to get an estimate, right? Because what it is is that I, I've already had people. I've been working on this for about two years now, trying to get something done and get in the works repairing. We had a guy that came out and looked at it and and 
specific terms of the softball field. Yeah. And he came back and said, unless you're going to do all of it, don't consider doing one field. All of it as a multi-purpose field. Field, 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 the field hockey field. But everything on spalling, well, not yeah, everything on spalling. Just spalling. spalling. Right. And the, the main problem is, is that we are not, we are a little worried about the soil stability underneath, yeah. and that's why we need to spend a little money on a study yeah. to to go down and find out across the property what is what's the soil quality, mm -hmm. and what do we really have to do to fix it right so that five ten years from now we're not dealing with more sinkholes and things like that. Okay. So. So this is the other reason why I'm really glad that this that we got the scale study. I hadn't seen this before, but you know I think that this really elevates to everyone's attention what you know what the athletics department in, at the school has been saying, what RecCom has been saying for years, hey, you know, we really need to do something about repairing these fields. Our town uses them a lot. We need them. Yeah. Um, and it, so I think, it, you know, based on the discussion that RecCom had on Monday, um, I think this committee should support their efforts, um, whatever they are, to bring those fields into their well, I'm sure we glorious, would. I think to, to uh, Peter's point, potential. though, let's stay focused for now. So the, the issue on the table is, is whether we deem the yeah. Chennai Rec multi-generational center project a non-starter with regard to Spalding or not, right? That's really the thing on the table. If we, once we are past that, if, if that's the right word, yeah, of course we can support it. So, so one of the things that I have in my presentation, but you guys have stolen probably about 80% of the thunder because you're already all over the issues that I was going to present, but the biggest thing I had in here a map showing why we are landlocked, right? Yeah. Spalding is the only open space for the school. There's nothing else around. It's either private or hardscape, and there's right. no, nothing to expand to. And then Spalding itself has wetlands on the southeast edge, opposite the school, yeah. and a 15 foot grade, or a basically 12% slope going up to the school. Both those things take about 10 acres, and they make it in about four and a half usable. If you look at the size requirement for one single nine foot softball field, or yeah. baseball field, that's four and a half acres. So I don't believe, I, I truly don't believe, and I think the Guild report backs it up, that there's any possible way we could add a building with parking to that property and not lose an inch of, of space. Right. You know, that, that's just the, the physics of the, uh, the topology there. This doesn't, this doesn't sink the community center project. You know, the, it's just the a whole, question the of whether idea, they, it's, yeah, that this, if it's going to go to Spalding, maybe it won't sink the project. Out, you know, this, group was discussing the um, site that was purchased, uh, the Mosley land, the golf property, um, and the back of that was designated as an area that would um, hold a community center for this community. So, you know, that's that was the primary focus at the outset. This was a sort of a, kind of a, like, oh, well, what if I wonder type of question, which, were, I, which I would like to answer tonight, you know. So let me ask you this. Would you like to answer it in the form of an informal Suggestion or in the form of a, of, a, of a vote? I would like to vote. Have a motion ready? Um, yeah, so I'll make a motion uh, that the school committee um, vote that Spalding Field should be retained for town athletics and um, would not consider the construction of a community center at this time. School and town athletics. School, school and town athletics, correct. I second. Uh, we, I'd like to hear if any of the teachers want to weigh in on anything different than what you've already heard with regard to the use of spalling? I'd like to make additional comment um, to, I know Holly's here from RecCom, and um, one of the things that Holly was, uh, you know, really interested in is expanding the rec recreation programs. Um, and I think that building a community center in town is going to give RecCom the opportunity to expand its offerings, and I think that would be fantastic. I know one of the things that was a concern was, you know, getting kids to that site um, in an efficient way. And I, you know, did a little bit of um, research, and I found that it, the Carlisle School now buses about 50 kids um, to uh, the Carlisle Kids' House, which is um, like less than half a mile from the school. And I think, you know, those kids getting bus there, they get off at the driveway and the instructor meets them there and takes them into the building. It's actually more ideal than an instructor parking somewhere else, walking to the school, waiting in the cafeteria for kids to come out. And then if you have a lot of programs, you have 50 kids and then you're walking them somewhere else. So I think, you know, just as one of the concerns that RecCom had, I, I hope that the idea of busing kids there, um, you know, 
what helps to allay that concern about it being within walking distance. And the Mosley property is actually in really good walking distance, um, especially for the middle school kids, because they often go to Kimball's and it's right across the street at Kimball's. Holly, would you like to respond? To you that? know, it's, again, this was really just something that, you know, at a meeting we said, again, what if? What if we put something there? It's close to the school. Right. It's close to the library. It's close to all these things right in the center of town. And that's really how the whole mm -hmm. Field, putting on Spalding came about. Um, you know, we had mostly transportation issues. We're going to have to cross that bridge when we get there. Um, you know, but it's, it's, it was really just to see, you know, if this is going to be a good site. And at our meeting on Monday night, um, one of our board members, Mark Spears, who's been on our commission for quite some time, you know, is concerned about the quality of the land at Spalding. And so we are talking about doing an engineering study to see what can actually go on that um, land. Because we are concerned because it's swamp and built and a field um, there's a bill there that even if we did um, a turf field there, is that going to sink? So that's kind of where we're coming from. So I don't know if a community center can fit on that property as well as a turf field, which could you know resolve many of the school's issues. Um, and that's kind of where the study was coming from. What can we put You're there? talking about the Chinau study or Peter? Mm -hmm. No, this is the what Chinau. I was bringing up. The, the 15,000 dollar study to, to look at the land, the soil quality there. Right. So I agree, I, I agree with you. I think if I understand what you're saying, and I made that point last meeting that the, um, I forget the name of the company that... The Gale study? No, the, what's the latest one? The, the, the Abacus. Abacus. That, well, Abacus wasn't going to do any of that, right? They were simply going to size the building and the parking and kind of pop it into a couple right. different maps, right? Yes. So it wouldn't, I mean, that that is a useful piece of information because it would give people a sense of how much footprint it would take, but it wouldn't at all address whether it's even feasible, you know, engineering-wise to put it there, right? So. Right, and I think if we were to go with this and, and just look at this particular site, it would yeah. show us what can it go on here. And then obviously further investigation needs to be done on can building actually even go on that site. Right. And we don't um, so I think that's really the purpose of it. It's not really, you know, we're definitely putting a community center here. Right. It's just how much space, how much useful space is there and let's really let's really take a, a look at it. So I mean to flip it around to Melinda's point, if we assume as it seems like we're trending towards saying, please don't put it on Spalding. And, and you mentioned, you know, uh, Melinda mentioned some transportation options to, what do you call it now, Goff? We don't call it Goff anymore, do we? Mosley, Mosley property. Um, and you said cross that bridge when we come to it. But same, a different set of practical things. But is that practical in your mind? Through some combination of kids walking, busing, whatever, is that a practical? I am grateful for any space that is open to recreation. Okay. So, and I will work and get, you know, some type of solution. We okay. then get the kids over there if that's where it ends up being. So. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So I just want to circle back to one thing that was said before: the idea that we should couple repairing the fields with a community center. I think is mistaken. Um, the, the two are not tied together. Except that we would, if we put a community center there, we would not have the fields to repair. Yeah. And my concern is for the long term yeah. that we may not repair the fields this year. We may not repair them next year. But what about the someday. next generation? Someday we will. Someday we will. Right. And that's my. That's why, why I, I think, think we, we should not. I think I understand that. Are there any further comments from the committee? Okay. Then I guess the motion is to retain Spalding. In other words, reject the option of. Building community center. So a yes vote means no building on Spalding. Retain right? Spalding for school and athletics okay. and rec right. town athletics. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. So I guess there's the answer. Thank you. Good. Okay. Well, yeah, it's clear. Nice. It's clear now. Thank you for the time and the effort. Yes. Um, okay. So uh, do I have the wrong package? Okay, Banta Davis. Um, sure. So I think we left the last meeting and we were just, we had some questions about the abutters. So um, yeah. we reached out to two abutters we identified, the Mosleys. Did you reach both of them? And the Nobles. Okay. Yes, we did. Um, and actually, uh, Warren Spence of the Trails Committee was kind enough to go out and 
mark the new trail so that they could have an idea of where the trail would actually be. And I believe after seeing that, um, the butters don't have any concerns, correct, Nancy? Right. No concerns. Okay, that's wonderful. The Moses and who's the other party? The Nobles. The Nobles. Oh, yeah. Good Carlisle names. Okay. Um, so, I think I'm good. I mean, if they have no concerns, then that was the issue. Why would we have a concern? We don't have anything. So, should we make a motion to accept the trails committee proposal to move the Banter Davis Trail? I'll make a motion to accept the Trails Committee proposal to move the Bank of Davis Trail. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Does anyone in the audience have any input on that? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Warren. It's easy. Very good. <laughs> Thank you for the trip. I appreciate it. That was very helpful to you. Thank you very much. Okay, bye bye. I appreciate it. Okay, good. All righty. So, school calendar, understanding. All right, my apologies. Yeah, so um, I moved the school calendar out of the agenda. The school calendar came out of the committee, but the, the teachers haven't had a chance to vote on the calendar yet. Okay. So, it's here. My apologies for jumping What's your timing? Last year, we were accused of dragging our heels, so. Well, and that was the interesting thing. Last year, this was on the agenda in the January meeting, and that's why, that's why I thought we were expediting it a little. Okay. We had earlier meetings, but um, I think the... the Teachers will have an opportunity to vote on it this month, and we'll have that feedback. So, okay. immediately after. So, does anyone want to feed, give the school committee feedback now? Or? Yes, we did okay. parent surveys before, and overwhelmingly they preferred not to start before uh, September. Oh, thank you. Um, we're giving up, based on this, two, uh, six days of summer vacation in the interest of two days of classes. Okay. So I don't think that's a, that's I not a good yeah, plan. I compared this calendar to the Concord Carlisle calendar, and they're very, 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 very similar, which is great. Okay, so that's a yes and a no. Well, and when I, I mean, I can walk through the calendar. Since we're here, I can walk through the calendar yeah. and talk about the start date, end dates, certain sure. days we have off. So I think some of the... Uh, so uh, as we we know, it's been a conversation before Labor Day, post Labor Day. We did discuss that deeply in the committee meeting. And really, based on the, some of the same information we had from last year um, and the years previously, that we decided the committee voted to have the day start before Labor Day and have the extended Labor Day weekend, um, just for the idea of students becoming more acclimated over that course of that time, uh, and then jumping into classes once they're ready. Understanding that while last year we had a late end and we have been lucky this year we haven't had any snow days and we do have a plan in place right. to address hopefully snow days as they approach that yeah. the early days were more beneficial beneficial instructionally than the later days mm -hmm. in the year um, so but that, potentially if we if this works out for us potentially we you know we get very good at it then um, we could look at a later an after Labor Day start yeah and I think I think someone Possibly you brought up an idea that I shared with the committee that, yeah, we could look at a later after Labor Day start for everyone, teachers, students, if we are able to successfully do that. That was a conversation at the committee, and it was, we wanted to see this play out one year before we considered right. that. Right, and to right. understand the bigger picture. What did you want to plan for a year? I'm sorry. To, see, to, see to see how the back. snow day, and to see how things end this year before we make a decision about next year, at which point we could do that for faculty and families. Right, right. right Post-Labor Day have both, both the two professional days after Labor Day and then the start. That would be the conversation of the committee next. Because yeah. right. that's the other consideration, right? The, the, the first day of school for kids is not the first day of school actually for teachers. Right. Teachers are back to school before the kids. Right. Before right. Yes. Um, would any teachers like to comment? Have you seen the calendar? I assume you've seen Well, they haven't, they haven't had a chance to see the calendar. They have, no, maybe comments on pre and post Labor Day start. I think it's good that we have the committee that has representatives of the teachers and yeah. they the should teachers have been on this. Oh yeah, this the committee is administration yeah. of teachers working together. Okay. Um, other dates from the calendar worth notice. Uh, professional and conference days on October twenty third and December eleventh, which would be two days without school. The first winter, the first winter break will include December twenty third as, as a no school day. That would be the Monday before the twenty fourth, which is the day off from school. 
So, so we um, normally have um, off 24th, but not the 23rd. So this, because it's a Monday, it would incorporate the full correct. weeks. Both in the interest of making the calendar more efficient mm -hmm. and in making use of parent time and teaching time more efficient, I suggest moving the conferences to evenings instead of daytimes or afternoons. So I think our conferences are scheduled in a way where they are days and evenings. It's the teachers meet with parents the, day when the, day the kids are in school the day, so they're starting in August. It's, the students are out of school because that is a work day for teachers. The conference day and conference evening is a, considered a work day for teachers. Yeah. So to have them do a six-day work week might be more than... It's the same number enough. of days in the year that, that need to be done, right? Correct. So if we can find a way to do it that doesn't eat the summer vacation and then still works with the parent schedules for when they're able to meet with teachers. But Josh, would you be asking teachers to come in and teach in the morning and then have a half a day and then do conferences and then go to dinner and then come back and do conferences? Yes. I think that's an awful long day. Which is, so right now what they do is they don't teach in the day, so they have conferences in the day and they're accessible for parents who want to come in Tuesday night or even Wednesday night. Like so they're so accessible. Anyway, is the point. Well, yeah, it's one of their 185 days. But I mean, the issue that's driving all of this is not wanting to repeat last year's issue of ending at the edge of In June. August. Well, that's one of I mean, the issue that drives which the conversation. Well, well, let me finish my point. I'm sorry. So, my sense of this little discussion about repurpose or you know getting teaching and parent conferences in one day and these various things and in fact when you start in the beginning of the year is mostly with a focus of when do you end especially if you have a snowy winter mm -hmm. and because at the end of the day as you said it's the same 180 days and you know there's lots of pockets of days that could be used but whether kids get out earlier in June or later in June it's you know there's a lot of flexibility as long as you meet the requirement so my point that I, is that you've spent a considerable amount of time and effort to develop these snow days, these home husky learning days. We haven't had a chance to try that. We should try that, and we should see how good that is. If that's good, like you know what we talked about last meeting, where I forget where he's from, but the superintendent says it's a whole new way of learning. I mean that may anyway without snow, they just maybe that problem, those problems go away. We don't have to do either of those things. We're, per we're perfectly, we're waiting to try it, but we haven't had the snow, which no, is good. I mean, maybe that's good. Well, I mean, do you, want, do you want to try I guess what David's saying is that the other well, district did it. Well, that's another you could try it. You do, you try it. do you want to try it? I mean, it's, well, know, let's get through the, the let's get through, you know, the month that we're, we're doing the deeper and shuffle. snow eventually, don't worry. Yeah, we'll right. It will eventually <laughs> snow. So there'll be a change. So all I mean to say is I don't think we need to, I think we need to understand. In my opinion, we need to understand how that works and whether that's effective. And then we can well, that's one of the ways that we can. No, but that's the one we first started with, so why don't we try it? I'm not saying we shouldn't try it, yeah. but there are other things we should do as well. Okay. And, just, and, and I guess going back to that conversation, it's, it's, it's the amount of time in that week of conferences that we're going to ask teachers to work. That's the part. So they can be available for parents in the evening, but. A, they have quite a few parents, right? So there's more than just an evening's worth of conferences. Right. So, so we have evenings. five days of teaching and then a few evenings of working. That that's challenging. We want we want them to be at the top of their game when they're in front of the students. And I think by setting aside the time for the conferences, so they can spend the time in their right minds with the parents, and then come back to class in their right minds with the students. That's the most beneficial. So that's why we have the conference days. And it's in the contract. But the other thing is the other thing is the December twenty third. I thought this started with the December twenty third, which is out of the ordinary. But I, I harken back to my days when uh, during the oil crisis when I was in school and, and we got days off because they didn't want to open the buildings up for yeah. and heat them. And here it's it's not that, but it, it could be a little bit of that. But also it's one day. Silly. It's one day we're going to have everybody come in on the Monday before right. the right. It doesn't make a lot of sense. If you don't have, you know, school on Monday, then you have you also capture that weekend into the right. whole deal. So it's kind of nice. Right. I think it's
And uh, so that's the December 23rd. This is the, we had this discussion, right? This is like the longest, right? Because the following year, Christmas would be on a Thursday, so you probably would open up Monday, Tuesday. Yes. Yeah. 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 So this is kind of the longest winter break that the calendar would have. Let's it's make like, the most of it. Let's make the most of it, right. It, although, if you move the, if New Year's is on a Thursday, do you open up for that Friday? If New Year's is on a Thursday, do you open up Friday? Yeah, that's good. So, so it goes the other so way. So maybe, too. yeah, it goes the other way. So maybe the, maybe the next two years are the long ones. That's possible. Um, so those are the major, those are the significant pieces. Uh, June 15th would be the last day of school with no snow days. June 22nd would be the day with pencil in if there were five snow days. I'm guessing we'll hopefully successfully implement the Husky Home Learning Day. It will be somewhere in the middle, probably on the 17th or 18th. But as you said, uh, it came out of the committee. I put it on here. You've had a chance, but the teachers haven't had a chance. For it. Okay, so we, we will take their recommendation and vote it next time. Okay, very good. Thank you. Sorry about that. All right. Um, update on school budget. This is the upcoming budget, right? Uh, yes. What I can report is that uh, the Finance Committee's guideline budget came out right before Christmas, and they reduced our request by $75,000. Mm -hmm. um, we at the same time, around the same time, we received notice of a new arrival student who will require a residential out of district. No, not residential, just, just out of district. Which is another expense that we had not anticipated, although we had a placeholder in for that. So that puts a lot of strain on our budgetary plans. Um, what we have responded with is a request that, at, well, in, com in companion with that, we've agreed to some reductions in the capital spend plan, right? Doing some things internally and deferring some items. And so what we've proposed to the Finance Committee is that they take some of that savings that's in the capital budget and put it <coughs> into the operating budget to give us some relief on that cut that they would like to see. Did you prepare the capital, the revised capital budget? Okay, so we're slated to meet with them on Monday, Monday and night. present that. So the long yes. caps, however, had closed out their decisions and was, was starting at a point that was much higher than guideline. So even school scale, scaling back. Mm, we well, scale back. we can only scale back what we can scale back. I, I understand. So we're, but we're, we're proposing a $50,000 reduction off of what we asked you. Yeah, now sure. maybe you're going to say sure 100000 but you know. We can only do, we, you guys are not in the same um, time, right? As Finn comes a little ahead of you, I guess, right? Because they've got a guideline, right? Um, what do you mean by they're, by they're ahead? They've already come they're out scheduled. with a guideline. You're saying you haven't. No, we have. Oh, you have? We have, we have we're we're oh, guiding towards that we look at it, and it adds up to, you know, a hundred and right. some odd thousand more than... You're right. I don't, know, I don't know the answer to what you're saying, so all, all we're saying is that we got kind of a double whammy I know. that we got a haircut from the finance committee and we learned of a new expense that we hadn't planned on. And in combination, that's, you know, $175,000, that's a lot. So we're trying to work with the finance committee to see if there's some medium ground and we'll go and so will every other department that got a cut. So I don't know how that will end up. But that's where things stand. There's really not much else to say. We'll present our information Monday, and you know they'll consider it. And I, I, don't, I don't know anything else anybody want to add. No, right, right now we're looking at our budget, and as we presented to the FinCom at that yeah. time, we we presented as streamlined budget as we possibly could, going right. in knowing that we had these other expenses that we hadn't accounted right. for, yeah. um, and it's going to be difficult to find. Seventy-five thousand. We start. Yeah. So we'll be meeting. Talking. Would you like to add something? No, I uh, I have a request. I have noticed that in the uh, school committee uh, agendas, uh, we have the budget conversation, but I did not see any materials associated with it, either in the December twelfth or. Uh, did, didn't we have a budget hearing where we presented? Back it. 
in the packet. Oh, it wasn't on the packet. The hearing is separate. The hearing is separate. It's not part of the school committee meeting, actually. The, the school committee meeting is separate from the budget hearing. Yes, yes, no, yeah. I understand, so but, but it wasn't discussion. the presentation of the budget hearing the public that was made public to the Mosquito? I don't know. Where is well, it? I've, I've already asked. Isn't it on the website? It, so. Christine, is, is that in the question? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. If, do. if it's not on the website, we should make sure that the budget as presented in the hearing is on the website. And that going forward, in advance of the budget hearing, that the, the, the right. budget that's the presentation is available. available as well. I agree. I agree. Good idea. Okay, good idea. Okay, very good. So policies. Do you want to first talk about the policy of policies, or was that for the moment? The policy of policies. No, no, policy. we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll share that with you at the end of the week, and then we'll talk about that. Okay. All right. Well, we're taking up your suggestion, Melinda, too try to, we're not doing a very good job of it this spring, but to try to uh, get a longer view, get a longer view of the policies yeah. and at least by next fall, my commitment is at least by next fall, we'll say these are the policies we're going to review in this okay. school year. Yeah. So, okay, a lot of we started the process of identifying the policies we're going to review, and as we did that process, we realized our policies are organized in such a convoluted way that we really needed to streamline the organization of the policies. So we've done some streamlining of the organization of policies, and we'll, we'll talk about that further yeah. at the next meeting. I'll, okay. I'll share that as we go forward. And that's where we are. It's going to be good, though. It's okay. going to be great. Yeah, it's I'm sorry. Be so <laughs> great. All right. What we also have done, uh, kind of as a practice, I would say, in the last couple of meetings and going forward is to provide both the present Carlisle School Committee policy and the closest equivalent out of MASC. It's sort of the cheaper way of using the it MASC. It saves us $15,000 right. from doing it. Right. Right. So, right. Um, so we have those two. Sometimes it's pretty much the same. So I guess, does any, I mean, I, does anybody want to take the lead on the first one, which is buildings and ground safety and security? I don't know if you had a chance to read it, so we reviewed this with the admin team, and uh, after reviewing the building, ground safety, and security, we have no proposed changes to what exists presently, but you may want to read that over. The, the one that exists in the CPS? Yes, ours, yes. Yes, right. You can see it's, it's They're pretty, pretty similar. similar. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, have, I have no particular questions. Others? No. Okay. I mean, I like this one. The... Um, is this the Mass Association of School Committees? The EC one, yes. The, yeah. Um, and I just thought that we could move over a couple of the paragraphs mm -hmm. from ours to this one and adopt this one. I'm saying you're saying what, move. They're, but they're pretty similar. I mean, I just don't want to make it too wordy. You, you want to you use some of the MSC words? Yeah, I like this one, the MASC. So you'd like to see MASC as the model and just import some? Yeah, because I think, you know, some of the things are not necessary to have. It says the public school buildings and grounds are one of the greatest investments of Carlisle. It's deemed in the best interest. Of, uh, I mean, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the first paragraph of the this one is better. Like More specific. Okay. And um, supervision over the care and safety of property used by the school department will be the general responsibility of the superintendent. And they will work with other municipal departments, including, I would add here, including fire, um, you know, equipment and systems. <coughs> um, I don't know if you want to add those because then you've limited yourself to those. And if well, you guys say including. Et cetera. You know, yeah, I mean, I would. If you're going to be adding other departments, do you want to Well, that's what ours down? says right now. Do? Ours says right now that. Um, ours says we are working with fire and law. Fire so hazard, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. If we're going to be mentioning other departments, is, is the town municipal facilities department worth mentioning? Yeah, probably. Yeah, so this is right. what they say in the MASC one. They will work with right. other well, municipal departments. That should probably departments. be in any way. Yeah. If we're going to start listing departments, I would suggest putting that one in. So yeah, so, yeah, that's in this one. That's why I like that, too. Um, and then I would just keep this paragraph and this one. Well, don't say this. We have, you have to tell yeah. me this <laughs> I mean, I can, yeah. you know, draft okay. a... You well, mean the last I think the, the, the broad view is whether we... <laughs> essentially start from the MASC policy and tailor it to Carlisle or do we import little pieces of 
MASC into the Carla policy, or do we just say, no, we like the Carla policy and we'll make some tweaks? Or, I like the MASC, and then I think we import some of the things here that relate to um, how we secure our buildings, because they don't really talk about how they secure mm -hmm. the buildings um, okay. in the MASC one, but we talk about access to school buildings and grounds. Mm -hmm. Outside of regular school hours, will be limited to personnel as work requires it. Key control system established, um, you know, okay. and then protective devices. It mentions protective devices designed to be used as safeguards against illegal entry and vandals, and will be installed when appropriate to the individual situation. So that we should keep as well. Okay, I, I have um, no opinion. If we're on the perimeter, protective devices, safeguards against vandalism. Are we into um, security camera policy? We have that separately? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's what's being mentioned here. You can refer to the to that broader policy if you want to know more about it. So that we can say that, in other words. Well, what, what is our calendar for security camera? I think that one wasn't up, actually, this year. It might be still coming. Oh, for looking at that policy on security cameras? Yeah. yeah, because that directly dovetails with this. And we've had some questions in recent years about what is the role of interior cameras for protecting kids and faculty, and simply punted and said, yeah, we gotta talk about that. Okay, when? We can put it on the agenda for a conversation, I just don't, f we can put it on the agenda for a school committee discussion. I just don't, it's not something where external cameras may have, we may have been motivated to put those in because we saw a need for them, I don't think we see a need for the internal <coughs> cameras as an administrative team and, and possibly faculty, but as a school committee, we can have that conversation. A few years ago, it was voiced from the administration that there was a need. That may have changed, but I'd like to understand how it's changed. So we, we'll put that on the agenda for the conversation. We have had with the team, and the team includes fire chief, police chief, mm -hmm. that line of discussion. Okay. So what, I lost yeah, track of this. Time. What are we saying then? Are we going to take this up in conjunction with a security camera policy, or are we going to take up a security camera policy separately? Um, I would like us to take up a security camera policy. Right. I'm okay with doing it separately. I think it would be smart if this referenced that. It well, it certainly would reference it, but do you, do you think we should wait on this to have that, or can I don't we? think we have to wait. Okay. So where else? Where are you two guys on the? whether we ought to just build, let Melinda build up the MASC policy, tailor it. I think that's a good idea. You prefer that one? Yeah, because I think she brings up some good points, that we have some stuff in there that's not in the MASC policy, so. No, but the, the core argument is start with that as the model. And yeah, edit it. yeah. You support that? Yeah. And Josh? In principle, I support it. I, I take a look here at what we're trying to accomplish with the policy and keep that in mind as you, as you draft it. Um, okay, so I guess you have the homework to draft a revised policy sure. and, and send it back. Okay. And, I, and we can decide next month whether it's, we, we probably at that point can vote on it, but we may not. Okay, very good. The next one is the um, emergency closing policies. And again, they are fairly similar. Anybody want to you want to start, Tim? Uh, again, no recommendations for change. In other words, stick with the Carlisle. Yeah, as we reviewed it, it didn't seem to be anything that stood out to us as problematic. Right. Right. Anybody else? You like the um, <laughs> No, I think I just had comments um, in the second paragraph at the mm -hmm. end. We reference students and personnel in the first paragraph. The second one, we should also say that in making decisions to close the school, superintendent will consider those factors relating to the fundamental concern for the safety and health of the children and personnel. And staff. Uh -huh. um, and then in the last paragraph, the superintendent will weigh factors and take action. Uh, students, parents, and staff will be informed early in each school year of the procedures that will be used to notify them in case of emergencies. Um, should we just list the vehicles for right in the policy of how we're doing that? You know, what are the ways that you can get that information? This, I, I prefer that we assign the superintendent right. the, the job of coming up with those and distributing them as opposed to us 
on so a we'll multi-year basis trying so to So then based on this policy, we'll be distributing information at the beginning of the year or at the relevant time when we think school closings might be imminent that, of how we'll be notifying people of school closings. Okay. Yeah, I think so. The, the MASC policy also adds, when schools are closed for emergency reasons, staff members will comply with school committee policies or reporting to work. Do we have such a policy? Or is it just implied that if the school's closed, it's closed, right? Wait, what is it? Um, the MASC policy ends with... Um, Do we have a school committee policy on reporting for work? I don't believe we do have a school committee policy. In so in other words, if you decide to close the school, you close the school. There's no... No, there's, everyone's in a different situation. Not everyone, but we have 180-day faculty, we have 185-day faculty, we have full year faculty. So everybody's in a different space. Right, but if you decide it's not... If it's sometimes I may school. close schools, but the offices may be open. Really? So this or facilities facilities probably well, the facilities people need to okay. come. So then you probably do need to reference that here if there's not a separate. So here's a sentence in the MASC one that says, Superintendent has the responsibility to see that as much of the administrative supervisory and operational activity is continued as may be possible. We could even could adopt that sentence. Yeah, I guess so. I guess we're in, I, I would just say we're in this as we, in my experience, Less has been more for the policy. Oh, okay. So I think while it's in the MASC policy, we can put it in this policy. And what we do is we follow those procedures internally. Anyway. So we can we can put it in if you want to you know, put it in the policy. Is there a there's not a staff policy right? on, on school closing? Or whatever there's not a policy, but there's procedures. So the office staff, like we have a group tech. So if if school's canceled, but everyone's going to be coming in at 10 o'clock, then I'll say, well, there's no school, but the building will be open, and if you can make it in, make it in. If you can't make it in, you're taking a, you're taking a vacation or a personal day. But then there's other days where it's like school is closed, don't come in, it's not a vacation or personal day, the building is closed because... I guess I just... I just so in open. practice, you're actually making that call anyway, just as it is stated here. You're, yes. You're making the call, so... Yeah. So well, we can either put it in the policy or not. You know, I had never considered that. Do, if the children aren't here, if the students aren't here, do the teachers come anyway? The, te the teachers do not. The teachers are on a 185 day contract. Right. And that aligns with 180 days that the students are here. But okay. other people are here okay. year round. So, like, okay. if the teachers are off. Like the registrar. Right. Yeah. Okay. So Nancy Anderson for say. <laughs> Nancy Anderson. <laughs> yeah, it's super. Okay, uh, uh, you know I'm fine. I mean, I, I guess it's it's not clear that it's two different things, but I guess I don't. It seems fine. I, I don't. I don't have to. Do that. So what is the what's the consensus here? Just as is is okay. Mm. <laughs> I don't feel strongly about it one way or the other. I. I I question what the utility of the policy is. If if we simply say, Jim, figure it out, close the school as you need to, tell who needs to be here. What are we trying to accomplish with the policy? If somebody's going to call Jim and say, Jim, you're not following the policy, get with the program. I don't I don't see it happening. But that I mean I think you could apply that to about ninety percent of the policies of review. We could just say, here are the duties of superintendent and list. Things that right. previously were policies and just well, list them. In some right cases, in. for legal and reasons, like we need. Policies. Some cases, for legal reasons, we need a policy. Well, I get it. In I some cases, uh, for quasi legal reasons, as in uh, residency, we, we yeah. need a policy that right. so we have a standard by which people right. can look at and say right. it's it's not arbitrary. In this case, you know, how does it help us? I'm I, fine I, with that. I, I think it's fine the way it is because basically what it's saying to anybody who wants to know is that's the guy making the decisions. These are the kinds of decisions he's making. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good enough. All right, next one is facility naming policy. Melinda? I, just, <laughs> I didn't really have any comments on this one. No. I have to say, I would like the preamble, the first paragraph from the MASC to be our first paragraph. Okay. It's all about inclusion, you know. So this is an important policy, Josh. 
Uh, okay, which parts of it exactly? Because those so are no, those we should focus on. No, I think I think the idea, and I'm not being facetious. I think the idea in other situations, in other times and places, when things happen, people are motivated by things that happen, and all of yeah. a sudden they want to do things. Right. In the in a moment, and it's not easy to put the brakes on something that someone wants to do in a moment when people are emotional about doing this. And that's when you need to refer to a policy that says. We, we have a way. policy. It is a process, and as much as we 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 feel it, this is not what we right. at this time. Does that make sense? So yes, although I prefer our policy to the NASU. Okay. But I like um, that. But you, the preamble. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the the reason I say that. Is this leaves it with the school committee as opposed to a multi party political argument between school councils, PTOs, yeah. school yeah, right. committees. Okay. But we can consult. So the question is should we add the first paragraph? Or is that yeah, just motherhood, you know? I think it sort of gives you the motivation behind the policy, which is okay. we're not trying to leave someone out, we're trying to include people in the decision. Okay, I'm fine. What do you think? Okay, with the policy the way it is. Yeah. But one question though is chairperson a word? This is chairman. Chairman should be chair, just chair. chair. Should yeah. be chair. And while we're on that in that region of the policy, um, Nancy should be uh, individuals who wish to have the school committee consider naming or renaming a facility should make such request, not their request. In writing. To the chair. Of the um, okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't have a either way. So I'm hearing not. I'm not hearing much appetite for adding the mother. That's fine. Okay. 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 Very good. That's it for we actually got through some policies. Good. We're doing well on time. Thank you. Communications and correspondence. Oh, oh. such communications and correspondence. Um, there's a number of them. MASC. Uh, Season's greetings from our attorney. Oh, um, that's so one awesome. of you can have the MASC calendar. Oh, I got one. I got one too. Uh, I'm already using mine. And then we're not sure what these are, but they're correspondences from you. You know, no, no one's not. You're not addressed to them. We got a ton of these things to each other. Okay. You have mail. <laughs> you have mail. Okay. I'm going to pass that along. <laughs> <again>. <laughs> if you don't need to look at it. I did How about your um, report? Oh, oh, my report. Um, let's see. All right, so we talked about the Finance Committee, Town Soil, Spalding, um, policies. Uh, a couple of things that happened in the past. I know it seems like a long time ago since uh, before the break, but we had a third grade City X 3D showcase, which was outstanding. Parents came in to see the students were challenged with solving problems and then designing solutions to these uh, problems, then printing up 3D models of their solutions, which was great. Uh, as you can imagine, the end of December we had incredible chorus concerts and uh, our chorus performed at the Council on Aging Luncheon. Um, sixth grade had a visit from author Rob Boyer. Uh, thank you to the PTO for making that possible. Um, the second and fifth grade buddies collected a record setting 220 pairs of PJs in their pajama drive this year to help out uh, children in need, which was great. Shout out to Mrs. Venaria and her crowd. Um, early act students collected over $700 during the parent-teacher conferences to support the Stella Rosie Foundation to help children in Uganda. Um, and then we have things coming up. We have our students going to be uh, trying out for MMEA festival auditions this weekend. Uh, Science Bob, the PTO is bringing Science Bob to do an elementary and middle school presentation. Middle school interim reports are going out on the 18th. The 21st, we have no school for Martin Luther King Day, the holiday. Um, and then on the 22nd, we have an early release. There may have been an early version of the school lunch calendar that went out with the 22nd saying no school. So if anyone had that early version, it is just an early release day. Um, our CPAC is up and running again. They have a meeting on the 23rd. Um, on February 1st, our elementary students will have the opportunity to celebrate Chinese New Year at the Chinese New Year Festival, which they're going to have something in school. And then on February 2nd, the entire Carlisle community have the opportunity to uh, enjoy the Chinese New Year Festival from 1.30 to 4. 
And then on February 8th, our middle school students will have a presentation on digital citizenship and cyber safety presented by the Middlesex Partnership for Youth. So um, that's just a quick update of some of the things going on before and after the okay. break, in addition to all those other things we spoke about. Is it, how long is the digital, digital citizenship workshop? I think it's going to be 50 minutes. Is that part of an ongoing thing, or is it like a... It's, it's part of a, it's a combination. It's part of our, our process, our program to, we have a digital citizenship curriculum, and we're working, I think, Nick was in meeting with the teams this week and looking to see what we're covering and what we need to cover and finding ways to get into classrooms and bringing in presenters is another way to cover some of those standards that need to be covered. Is it for the whole middle school, five through eight? Yes. Oh. <coughs> so it, it's just, part, the messages are always important for our middle schools to have as they navigate social media and all those other pieces. Okay. Um, members and committee reports. Josh? Uh, long term caps hasn't met since our last meeting. Okay. Um, municipal facilities committee has many times. Um, we have asked the Board of Selectmen to appoint um, a gentleman who passed our interview process uh, as the uh, municipal facilities. Uh, facilities department manager. Um, we have uh, selected and negotiated a contract with TV Architects for the renovation of the police station. Um, and we have dual bad news uh, today that the um, underground underwater underground tanks removed from the fire department parking lot. Um, we do have a situation of groundwater contamination there that needs to be uh, remediated. Furthermore, it appears that we may not have state coverage for that remediation as the tanks may not have been on their golden list. How, does the, how do tanks get on the golden list? This is, uh, information is only a few hours old and I'm not at the center of it, but um, it's bad news. Do you have a sense of uh, how much money is going to be required? Well, you, you dig until you stop stuck. getting contamination. Is that a six-figure dig? Or? It, 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 it starts at five and goes up. And that would be a, a warrant article for this this round. Um, we'll see. Okay. We've got some facilities money that was allocated to other projects right. that we're going to be using for it. We haven't met with selectmen to talk about what to do. We haven't even met as a group to right. consider what to do. But um, this is uh, new news on the uh, right. on that situation at the DPW. Um, we abandoned the idea of putting solar on the roof of the DPW shed as the shed does not meet current building code mm -hmm. even without the solar panels. Right. So that's not happening, but we did um, commission a complete site survey and delineation of wetlands to see if the upland part of that property um, could be used by the town for other reasons, potentially for DPW. We have an issue there because um, not only is the roof not meet code, but when we did a test of the septic system, it doesn't work either. And um, there are limited places on that property where we can where, where, where is we can site a septic at DPW. There are limited places where we can site a septic system. We're looking at what about a temporary trailer with a holding tank. Um, so it, it's getting fun. You got all the glamour jobs. Yeah. Isn't the wasn't a solar array one of the questions? It sounds to me like uh, this is a different solar. This was on the DPW garage. This yeah. is not transfer station. Oh, okay. So that would be something that, you know, town owned, right? Right. Um, well, we probably would lease the roof space, but it's completely different because there are tax advantages for private entities to own and operate solar that the town doesn't have. Right. But we won't even do that because we have to, the roof won't support it, and the engineer we hired said you'd be better off just raising the building than trying to... Um, Put something on the key. Yeah. They use big doors. Um, Okay, Christine. Do you um, I think for the region. For the region, I guess I'll just, just say that uh, we're uh, they're looking to address the parking issue at the high school, and part of that was a study that they did about the entire campus, and so they uh, will be moving. We will be moving forward at the um, uh, town meetings to put uh, warrants in about the parking. But it would, and was there some talk of reducing the amount though? Um, there are two. 
I yeah, said. the dollar bill, right? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it seemed like it was a big bill, and then people would come. It's it just that there are a couple of options of what they could put in, um, and when we get the first go around about what the ideas could be for the entire campus, they had to refigure the numbers for us when they got into more detail. So. Um, I don't, I don't Did they take anything out of their request, or is it still the same request? No, no they didn't. Okay, and what about the budget? Was there some discussion in the operating budget request? With uh, we have Concord from Common Carlisle as well. Was, was there any negotiating or anything like that? Uh, not to my knowledge at this point. Um, I haven't been to the Concord meetings, but um, I have a school committee meeting next week. Okay, Susan, do you know anything about that? I think I think it was the meeting we had on Monday. That's this. That's the school. So it remains at the five percent, or what is it? Five point six three. And then comments. That's going to be for the FinCon meeting on Monday. Yeah. Right. They are going to. That's true. They are right. going to the Monday meeting. So the Monday meeting. Not uh, that we have. Lori, the superintendent, will be there. Right. And Melissa will be there. Also. But to your understanding, the Concord FinCon is not pushing back on that. Uh, no. 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 Cool. What? They're fine with it. No, it, it was fine. Wow. They, they've got growth in town. They do have growth, yeah. Okay. Well, okay. We don't live there. We know that. Um, okay. Anything else from the region? Melinda, you already talked about solar. Do you have any other? Okay. Uh, okay. I think that's it then. Quiet period. It has only been like three weeks since we've been meeting, and it was all vacation holiday time. All right, warrants. Oh, hold on. <coughs> um, actually, I, I received all the warrants after the agenda was already posted, so I will just read what I have. Okay. Um, accounts payable warrant number 4419 for $86,240.92. Payroll warrant number 4219 for $386,067.25. Accounts payable warrant number 4719 for $89,227.51. And payroll warrant number 4519 for $344,804.59. Okay, very good. All right, action items. I'm going to vote a few things here. The first one is to vote to approve the CEF grants that were presented last month and are in your packet. <coughs> Motion to accept. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. To move with appreciation. With appreciation. That's right. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Next up. Was there any comment? Was there any comment? I think it was a uh, next one is uh, the bullying prevention policy. Which you discussed and includes cyberbullying now, I think. Is that the mm -hmm. term that we use? Um, motion to approve. Second. Further discussion? Uh, the only question I had was if we wanted to, it looks like we have something repetitive. Okay. Did anybody else notice that? Or? It's so long. It's so long, we lost her. So you can see. Where is it? Yeah, it starts here again. It's kind of repeating what was up here. The fringe on the right thing? Which part of it? Sorry, I'm not following. Yeah, it's right here. Creates a hostile environment. It infringes on the rights. It's all up here. Oh, I see. So I think if you just, you know, you're now talking about... I have a question about the interpretation. Under reporting. First paragraph. Students who believe they are a target of bullying are obligated to report the incidents. The target, however, shall not be subject to discipline for failing to report bullying. What does it mean to have an obligation? Where are but, you? Um, reporting. 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 Oh. First paragraph. 
how, do, how does one interpret that? One has an obligation, but one's not obligated. I have to look up the definition of I, obligation. I, but I, I, I would say that it's their option. What does obligation mean? Well, it it's one of those words you use it so many times, then all you of a sudden should. Depends on what it is. is. Yeah. An act or course of action to which a person is morally or legally bound a duty or, a duty or commitment. Yeah, so, so we would hope that they would report this act of bullying. But they don't have why not just say that? But like if they don't, it's not. But why, I mean. I know, I'm trying to interpret the language from this state, but I think they, I think what they're saying is bullying is is reprehensible, and we do not want that to take place. So if you're aware of someone bullying, but because you're the victim, you sh you should bring it to some others. Yeah, but if you don't, because you're the victim, then well, I we see. Okay, I see your point, but the, the reason I think it's said this way is because they lump all the other people in there. So students who believe they are a target of bullying. It goes on to say, students who observe an act of bullying right. or who have reasonable grounds to believe right. that these behaviors are taking place are obligated. And I well, we should say, maybe we should just say, all right, like it says below, maybe it should be, you've got a sentence that says, parents or guardians, parents or, guardians or members of the community are encouraged to report an incident of bullying as soon as possible. Maybe that should be as soon as observed. But I mean, wouldn't it all be the same? And then there's school staff as well. So. Shouldn't everybody report bullying when they observe it? Everybody Parents, should. Parents, guardians, members so of the community are that? asked to report. Instead of encouraged, it's a more direct. Are asked to report and it's an bullying. Well, I think, I think the, the school staff one is pretty direct, right? You see it, you've got to report it. Right. But parents are encouraged and students are, it says obligated, but maybe it should be encouraged. Maybe that should be encouraged too. I, I don't know. We lifted it directly from the state language, so okay. we can modify it as we see it. So what this is saying is that sentence that of being obligated, they have three categories of students here. The target, those observing, or those have reasonable grounds to believe that it's taking place are obligated. And then it just gives you a pass here for the target shall not be subject to discipline for failing to report. Obviously, there are well, maybe, what does that mean? The, maybe just should, maybe students, we should say they're encouraged and get rid of the. Are students the only ones obligated? It just says in the, no, the, the, the language. No, the, the, um, the, the staff is required. I mean, it's. It, you know, it's kind of so it, but right. it says here, you know what? You're yeah, obligated, but your school shall have a means for anonymous reporting. Yeah. So I guess when I read this, you know, and I, I thought, wow, you know, then it addresses immediately afterwards that you know each school shall have a means for anonymous reporting of incidents and. No formal disciplinary action will be taken solely on the basis of an anonymous report. That's a stupid paragraph. All right, so we should rewrite this section. It sounds like we should. The paragraph she just read is. You made a comment, Christine. No, it's not her. That was under her breath. I, in practice, I that's, that's, a, good, in practice, that's a good paragraph. paragraph. I, people you know. need to know you can submit something anonymously, but people should also know. We're not going to give anyone a consequence. Right, but that's not what they It's solely. Yeah, based solely on that. No, I, actually, I think, yeah, I think that's okay. I think that part's okay. But I think that paragraph, so there's one, two, three, four, five paragraphs in this section. I think one, four, and five should somehow be combined. This is the various obligations to report. And then there's a... Then there's a separate paragraph that Christine doesn't like, which is a means of anonymous reporting. And there's the, the statement that if you make a false accusation, you're in trouble, right? So various, if you see it, you should, you should report it. You don't have to, but you should. And if you don't want to give your name, there should be a way to do that. And if you do it and it's false, and you knowingly did it falsely, that's a bad thing. And that's it. Do you, do you really think we should back off of the um, language of obligation? I, I do, especially yeah. when coupled with um, the false uh, accusation. Yeah. Because if you're compelled to, right. to say something, you but wrong, endangered yeah. by saying something. saying something, that's a potentially uh, I don't know. uneasy I'd like, to do, Would any teachers like to weigh in on this? There's been a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of um, 
you know, we spent a lot of time with Obeyes on, on all this stuff. And Matt is here too. He's worked on this too. And Matt as well. So there's, we I'd be talk, happy to take in. Yeah, we can talk about policy, but then we can also talk about our procedures, what I do at an administrative right. level. And sure. So this is kind of getting to that level, I feel, of how Procedure. you do your job. Okay. Versus what the law says around bullying at okay. the state level. So what are you saying, Matt, that we should stay at a higher plane here? Just say, you know, people should be encouraged to report. Or I, I think you may want to run this by an attorney council. <laughs> <laughs> because you yeah. could open yourself up to liability if there's a lawsuit, right? A lawsuit Maybe. about somebody reporting oh, something. Yes. Any aspect of the bullying. Yeah. Because it, just because it remains so law. Well, I mean, one reason we use the MASC template is they vetted yeah, exactly. everything. And if that's been vetted through their attorney. Is this separate out of MASC? Is this their template? Yes, this is okay. right from the state. Okay. Yeah. okay, then that's been vetted by attorney. All right. So but the language is in there for a reason. Yeah, no, no, you're right. That's, no, that's a, good a good point. That's a good point. Okay. All right, maybe we just accept it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then back to your question, was it one they lost, everybody lost track? There's some redundancy in here? Yeah, but we're just going to, okay. I mean, it's not that big Did we deal. really lift this? It's pretty much all in this. So, yeah, we went, okay. we had, our, we had our own policy, which was lighter. We discussed that at the okay. last yeah. meeting. Okay. And we said, why don't we go with all the one that isn't. So let's, let's, let's try a vote here to see if we get, a, get this thing hanging out. Yeah, let's do it. Anybody want to vote to approve this policy, which is a clone of the MASC? If there's no appetite, we'll just table it and we'll rework it. But we should either vote to approve it or we should take an action to rework it. I guess I Do don't. people still have questions about it that would prevent us from? My, my view is it's it's poorly worded and wordy. Okay. And um, I understand the point of the safe harbor and MASC. Yeah. Just because MBSC does it doesn't mean it's well done. Would you like to take a draft? No. If you take a draft, <laughs> no. You, you, I, I, you can rephrase that, David. No, if you want to take a crack at drafting it, we will run it by council. We'll spend a little money, but we'll have a cleaner policy. I'm okay with that. But I don't think just saying no is an acceptable um, criticism. Well, if, if, if there's not a will to pass it as it is, I don't know if there is or isn't a will, but if there isn't a will, then we'll take it back and we'll see if we can streamline it a little. We won't streamline it much. Well, let's find out. Get outside of the law. Let's find out. I'll make a motion to accept this policy, the bullying policy, as, as written. I'll second it. Okay. We'd hate to have a three minute Yeah. I won't vote. I'll just stand on this one. All in favor of accepting the policy. Well, any further discussions? No. All in favor of accepting the policy as written, say aye. 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 So moved. <laughs> we can always look at it again. You know, I'm not going to back stay in the way of progress. Yeah. Okay. No, I understand. All right. It's not beautiful. Um, yes. School attendance. Let's try to get it done by the end. Everybody should come to have School attendance, we have. Uh, the Carlisle, there's no particular MASC policy there. We looked at that one. Uh, no. We looked at it last week. Right. Right. Oh, yeah, we talked about this, right? Yeah. So bring that packet in. We don't refer to this stuff. We should. Are we, are we voting on this one tonight, too? Yeah. Okay. Any comments? I, um, in the second paragraph, Students may be excused temporarily from school, and then there's listed reasons. Um, is medical appointments a reason? I mean, I, that's not in there, but. Where, where are you? It's in the second paragraph. Therefore, students may be excused temporarily from school attendance for the following reasons. Illness or quarantine, bereavement or serious illness in family, weather so inclement as to endanger the health of a child. Would you recommend that in? Yeah. Well, are medical appointments a reason for? I mean, there's yeah, lots of is, yeah. yeah, I think that's good, good observation. Okay, some medical appointments, okay. Um, do, you, do we want to limit it to medical, dental, legal? Uh, yeah, good point. Um, what we call that? Professional, professional appointments. Uh, I mean, really, 
if a parent says I need to take my kid out to do something, isn't that okay? As long as it's not. Uh, we get, well, now we know why it's not. So there's two ways. Like, do we think it's okay? We don't think everything's okay. Is there a consequence? But there aren't necessarily consequences. Right? So if I was going to take my child to Disney World, well, people do that. They take my people own do that. Vacation. Well, we're not putting anything about that. People do that, but the school isn't endorsing that. We're not saying that that's... No, but I mean... Not telling what right I mean, really, <laughs> why don't we just say that students may be excused temporarily from school attendance when parents and their discretion be necessary? Because no, I, think, I, think we, I think we keep it like we, get, we say these are acceptable, these are excused. We, we, have, we have attendance, which is if you miss school, if you miss school, it's listed as unexcused. Like it, it can be unexcused. Like you're not here, but it's not excused. We didn't feel it was an so excusable you're, reason. You're getting counted on the number of unexcused. The only point is here that I, you know, I'm taking my kid to the orthodontist, and you wouldn't believe how many times they have to adjust those things. No, I believe yeah. I have a, I have a, but that's a, a dental appointment would be an excuse. Like if you bring a note from your doctor, that's the only reason why I put it in here about the medical. No, but it, now we get to the mat. I mean, where we procedurally based, where we have to list all the reasons. Can we just put medical appointments in there? Is that a, that's a thing, right? That we can take our kids to medical appointments. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm thinking. Should we should we phrase it in a way that says, you know, including these reasons? There may be reasons that we didn't. Or there might include, just be. These are the, a word instead it says illness or quarantine you might just be able to have a word in there that well you actually that's a good point right when Medical. isn't the rule when the child has a certain fever they're they're not supposed to come in. Right? Well, that's illness. We want them to go, but they were not allowed to. No, but you're right. Medical appointments, legal appointments. So, but that's I mean, an those, illness. Those would be included. Okay, but they're not listed. Why is weather there? Isn't weather covered by the other policy? Well, this is this might be more if like. Local weather, if like we have school house. but a tree fell in your driveway and you can't get out, and like, well, if you call us and say, oh, I can't get out. But aren't we getting kind of silly here? We are. Really? I mean, the whole thing is, no, but don't, 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 take my kids don't we the trust office. the parents to get their kids to school yes. most of yes, the time? So it's not about, it's not about see, I do think it's not about trust, but it's about the school. Legitimate. And the district is setting a level of expectation. Yeah. And really, like, yeah, we do expect. Well, but you say that in the first paragraph, right? Yes. One of which is to so so beyond just so we're clear when you take your child on the five day vacation, like the school isn't endorsing that. We and this is this is the only way we let parents know that we're not in favor of that. Well, then why don't we just say that? We say <laughs> no, the, the school <laughs> the school requests of parents that they make every reasonable effort to well, ensure that their child attends and they understand yeah, when they first. can't do it. I think and that's it. There are two sides of that though, and I don't need to step too much on Jim's toes here. Part of it is to what extent do we condone it. The other, to what extent do we want to bend over backwards to support it. But I don't see That's either of those things. Different issues. Yeah. But neither of those issues is here. Here is a policy that says it should, I mean, a thought is the policy should say, like a broad policy, the school, parents should make every reasonable effort to make sure their child attends school. Well, what the policy does not And there are, we understand that there are circumstances such as illness that where it's either not recommended or not practical, okay. But you, you, the policy is you should, all other things being equal, you should try to get your child. Yeah, you somebody, should. You can say reasonable is that Disney's cheaper the week before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. well, look, there's, there's, there's certain <coughs> laws that around school attendance. Yeah. There are. So, you know, I mean, that's, all part of this policy, and that's part of the consideration. It's not specifically, you know, it's referenced here. I, my, I'm you know, a little bit sorry that I brought it up, but my only point was, you know, that medical appointments it seems like one of the, you know, one of the reasons that. I think it's worth here. including, absolutely. So we want to stick with this frame, but just add some more specific. Yeah, medical, <clears throat> medical, dental, professional. Medical, what? Okay, medical. I, mean, I should say dental. dental med. If they have a psych appointment. Medical. That counts too. It's not. That's, that's medical. Yeah. That's behavioral. That's a behavioral. That's a behavioral. behavioral. Yeah. Health related appointments. Or legal. Health related appointments. No, professional appointments is probably. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So what are we saying? Professional appointments. Health and professional. <coughs> medical is a profession, right? So professional. Yeah. Okay. And then I didn't know if we really need this paragraph. Which one? It's a, it's a policy, so. 
A student's understanding of the importance of day-to-day -day work is an important factor in the shaping of his or her character. Parents can help their children by not allowing them to miss school needlessly. Yeah, but I think actually, to me, that is more to the point I was getting at. That is the thing we want to emphasize. Okay. Kids should go to school, parents should encourage it. That's the main thing. You can't predict whether, you know, yeah, kid yeah. has an appointment with, I don't know. Well, I'm not it, saying I disagree it, with it, I'm just if, saying if, 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 if a parent didn't value school, are they reading the policy? Yeah. <laughs> what they would change their mind when they read when they well, read now this. Now we're why do we have like, No, I think what David is saying though is that if you're saying to your kid, well, we're going to go to Disney the week early because early, it's cheaper, you, you are not giving them an, a, an important right. the, a message of importance. So, right? so what are we doing? Wagging our finger at them? I mean, well, but you no, but I, you're sort of playing you're deal. you're playing the devil's advocate of things you you've been on the other side of that argument where you said we should have a broad thematic policy. So that when we need to, like perhaps when you know Ms. Stack is confronted with a child who's consistently missing because the parents don't seem to, I won't say care, but they don't seem to emphasize that the child has to go. If, if there's she no chief board decision behind it, then what is but it? But there about? is. So then maybe. And when I, and when I say maybe, like, and, and so I apologize for not knowing the inner workings of everybody's classroom. But if you are in my previous setting, so like if in a high school level, yeah, excuse or excuse means a lot, whether you get to make up work or not, whether this is held against you for course credit. So that may be taking place in classrooms. Like if you miss the day and you're, it was just a frivolous day, then A, I may not spend that much time making up, helping you understand, not helping yeah. but you know what I mean, like going out of my way to get all the assignments, but also give me the opportunity to turn in that work that gets counted towards your grade. So they're, they're and I'm, Okay. I'm not that intimately aware of what everyone's practice is, but that is a practice, and that's why if you look on our attendance, you're listed according to whether it's excused or unexcused. So the teachers have that data on a student's absence. All right. So what's on the table is to add professional appointments to the list of excusable things. I move to accept the policy as amended. Second. Further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Okay. Just think of it like we're saving $15,000. Okay. Finally, <laughs> non-discrimination <laughs> non -discrimination to a qualified individual with a disability. And then it says policy pertain. Why are there two titles? Do we compare to the policy? That's how, it was. That's how it's written in MASC language of the world? Or in our world. Okay. Again, that's one where I think we want to stay pretty much in the swim. This is very much a legal necessity. Yeah. I'll entertain a motion to accept. So moved. I didn't get to look up this word. Do you? Orally, that means in voicing. That means like by hearing. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, motions on table requires a second. Oh, second. Any discussion? You verify that. All in favor of accepting? Aye. 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 Excellent. Okay. Uh, citizens comments? Any citizens left? Ah, uh, yes. Um, I don't know if you can answer this, so we can take okay. it as a comment, but I understand that the uh, CDF granted funds for the uh, Wilson reading program and there was a system and there was a question about whether materials yeah. filled the money and whether it was a gap yeah, for the materials. So what was the question? <laughs> Would we support the We are, yeah, we, yes. So you also have yes. materials. That, that was answered last month when I asked the question. I think it was, right? Yeah, yeah. Jim said, yeah, we got the money for it. Right. Yeah. Even, that, even in the minutes? It's in the minutes. I think it was in the minutes that we would support it. Yeah. Sure enough, we got the minutes. Mr. Koblatsky asked how funding for the training has been spent. Mr. Koblatsky asked uh, no. uh, if the school is buying the kits to go on with teacher training. Uh, okay, and then we said, see, Susie said, see us if it's a hardship. We didn't actually say it. Okay. Um,
Motion to adjourn into executive session. I'll, I'll make a motion to adjourn to executive session, not to return to open session for the purposes as follows. Purpose two, to conduct contract negotiations with Superintendent O'Shea. Purpose three, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body. And purpose seven, to comply with or act under the authority of any general or special law, federal grant in aid requirements under MGL chapter 3923B1 through seven, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 22G, consideration of release of executive session minutes from previous meetings. I second. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Gambino, aye. Modell, aye. Kablowski, aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you. 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 Thank you.